Episode 39 Traitor They arrived at the Dawson family's manor in silence. Ginny parked the car and immediately got out to head straight to her room. As she passed Lewis, she didn't forget to kindly tell him that Peter was still in the car. As soon as Ginny opened the door to her room, she saw someone sitting in the darkness. The light from the hall was dim, and she squinted, trying to identify them. It was Fred, lounging on her bed with a cruel smile creeping onto his face. Jenny felt her stomach turn at the sight of him looking so comfortable, nestled right where she slept. Fred, what are you doing in my room? Not to mention on my bed. Don't you see how inappropriate this is? Fred hadn't heard Ginny coming. He had been imagining what he would do with her on this soft, plush bed, when she suddenly opened the door and startled him. Back so early? Not that I mind seeing you sooner. Now, didn't you say you had something important to tell me after today's events? I can't wait to hear it. Fred's gaze traveled over every inch of Ginny's body. The image of her on stage still lingered in his mind. All night, he'd been imagining pressing against her body while she wore that delicate pink dress. Ginny thought about what Peter had told her and felt a little helpless. She just wanted to get away from the Dawson family and not have anything to do with Peter anymore. It was time to finish fulfilling her end of their bargain. What I wanted to tell you is about Peter's legs. He's not disabled like everyone thinks he is. He can still walk. Ginny would help Peter with this one last thing. And once Peter helped her, they would owe each other nothing. And they'd never have to see each other again. What? How do you know? Fred frowned. He had suspected before that Peter might be feigning the disability, but after a long investigation, he'd found no evidence. So he'd just let it go, thinking his suspicions had been incorrect. I just had a feeling that Peter wasn't being fully honest about his condition. But then, by chance, I saw him stand up on his own. And although he quickly sat down again, I could tell he wasn't as weak as he seems. Ginny spoke with such conviction that Fred felt tremors of anxious energy sweep through his body. Ginny, thank you. I need to leave now, but if you find out about anything else, tell me immediately. Fred couldn't wait to confirm Ginny's revelation. Nothing else mattered at that moment. Seeing him rush out looking flustered, Ginny let out a sigh of relief. She prepared to close the door so she could take a good bath, eat a good meal, and get a good night's sleep. But before the door closed, a hand stopped her. Ginny, I can't believe you would spy for Fred like this. How can you do this to Peter? What does Fred have to offer you? Have you forgotten whose side you're on? Jake looked at her with disdain. Ginny glared back coldly and continued to try to force the door closed. You low-life jerk! All three of you Dawson boys are low-life jerks! Jake had already been feeling ashamed of Fred when he'd seen the man sneak into Ginny's bedroom. He'd hidden in the adjacent room to keep an eye on his older cousin, only to hear Ginny stab Peter in the back. And you're a traitor! You double-crossed Peter! You've got no room to throw stones at us. Jake heaved his weight into the door from the outside, pushing into the room, but Ginny pushed back against it from the inside. For a moment, the door stayed still, not budging in either direction. Well, you're a gigantic player, messing with Natalie's feelings. You'll get what's coming to you. Jake couldn't help but laugh. Hey, I'm charming, so sue me. Yeah, I took her to dinner a few times and sent some flowers. Not my fault that friend of yours was already desperate to pounce on me before I even asked her out. But maybe you're just jealous I didn't go after you. Is that it? 
When Ginny heard this, she became so angry, her teeth clenched. Creep, you stay away from Natalie. Ha, huh, I won't, and you can't stop me. Jake taunted her. Ginny felt helpless, but when she noticed his hand on her side of the door, she inhaled bitterly and bit it. I won't let you bully my friend. I won't let you bully me. I won't let Peter, Fred, or anyone else in this family push me around anymore. I'll bite you to death. Ginny sunk her teeth into Jake's hand like a crazed monster. She was so angry, she felt she could bite off a piece of his flesh with no remorse. Jake cried out in pain. Ginny, what are you, an animal? Let go of me. Let go. Ginny, come on. Uh. What are you doing? Peter had suddenly rolled up behind Jake in the hall, looking at the two of them ruthlessly, and he spoke with fury in his voice. Even if he and Ginny had agreed that their relationship was in name only, she was still technically his wife. If he just let this go, it would raise Jake's suspicions and risk their secret cooperation being exposed. When Ginny heard Peter's voice, she was stunned for a moment. She immediately released Jake's hand. There was a faint taste of copper in her mouth. When Jake saw blood trickling down his hand, he erupted. Peter, you better watch this woman. She's been spying for Fred. He was sitting on her bed. And did you hear what she told him just now? She said that your legs are fine, that you've been faking. Jake looked at his cousin, just waiting for the explosions to start, thinking, hmm, Peter's hair trigger temper always delivers a good show. That'll be the end for Ginny. Peter's gaze was cold. He looked at Ginny as if he'd just discovered she'd served him a poisoned drink he'd already sipped from. His expression scared Ginny so much that her shoulders shrank inward and her chin dropped toward her chest. She saw the residual pain from her complete rejection of him during their fight, and she almost wondered if she needed to worry about her physical safety. Peter pushed the handrails on his wheelchair to move toward the door, causing Ginny to take a few steps back. Jake smiled maliciously. He knew, like all the men in their family, the one thing Peter hated most of all was betrayal. Peter entered the room smoothly and closed the door behind him. As the door shut with a click, Jake shuddered and immediately ran off, as if the fallout from Peter's anger could seep through the door and burn him as well. What would happen to Ginny, a quivering little rabbit, now that she had to contend with Peter, a big, bad, bloodthirsty wolf? After closing the door, Peter turned himself to face the trembling woman. His hard eyes softened completely as he said, You did well. Ginny realized he was referring to what she had said to Fred. I did what I promised you, Peter. Now, what about what you promised me? Don't worry, I haven't forgotten. Peter suddenly had an ominous feeling. Once he held up his end of the bargain, what would be the binding force between them? If no outside circumstances were keeping them together, wouldn't their relationship, whatever that was, be over? Fulfilling his promise to Ginny meant they would be separated. Peter, let's be real here. This is a cooperative relationship. We have a deal. You get what you want, and I get what I want. We agree to divorce and have nothing to do with each other ever again. After saying this, Ginny suddenly felt her heart empty. Peter was silent for a moment and frowned. Was it because she felt nothing for him that she was able to say such harsh words? If being around him was torture for her, then he was willing to let her go. All right, I agree.